Welcome to God Vision in Motion. I'm Willie, Evangelist Willie Smith, along with my beautiful wife once again. Thank you. And honey, thank you for joining me once again that we can uh, be on one accord. Thank you. Teaching the Word of God to the people out there. Okay, so uh, let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll go into what our lesson. We're going to do a part two, a continuation of what we were teaching on the last time. Because we didn't get that far with it, and I believe it's apropos that we do so, because there's a lot of people out there that's hurting, and I didn't realize that you know there were so many young people have lost hope, you know. And what we want to do is have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you. Let's agree in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you and we praise you for this day. We thank you, Father God, for your word. Father God, that your word will go forth, Father. And that revelation will come to the hearers. We thank you for those, Father God, that have joined, united with you. We thank you for them, that the eye of their understanding will be open, that they may know what is the hope which you have called them. We thank you, Father God, that faith will rise up in them as we begin to teach this word and point our scriptures to show them how to base their relationship with you on the word of God. Not by some kind of experience, but by your word that they will take a stand and be strong in the Lord and in the power of their bite. We thank you for this, for this day. In Jesus' name, Jesus amen. amen. Now what we want to do, we want to continue to do, I said, part two, and this is dealing with healing. Everything that we get from God as believers, as Christians, it must be by faith. We have never seen God, but the whole thing about it, he says, it was those who believe. And those who is a believer, and he is a rewarder of those that diligent to seek him. And we must seek him by faith and based upon this word. And I thank God for this word because this word here covers every base. Anything that you need is in this Bible here. And, and uh, what we want to do is first of all to start off with a script of why Jesus came. And this is why he came. Let's look at the book of Luke. And... Uh, I believe it's 4 and 18. Yes. Uh, honey, would you like to read that? Sure. Start off reading. This, uh, by the way, I'm reading from the KJV Bible, King James Version Bible, and it says in verse 18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised. Amen. And then uh, to preach, and it goes on in verse 19, he said, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And this is all, uh, and he and then after that, that's where he went in to preach, and as he closed the book, and he gave it to the ministers, and he sat down, and the eye of all of them that were in the synagogue was fastened up on him, and he began to say unto them, and I like to say unto you, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. Will be, because we're getting ready to start pointing out scripture. And now what we're talking about, we've been talking about sickness because there's a lot of people in the body of Christ are sick. And they don't realize the thing that Jesus paid for them. They don't realize, in other words, it's a, it's a thing as though uh, if they complain and murmur and, you know, always talking about their sickness or something, is that somebody care. You know, in other words, they need attention. You know, oh, I'm just suffering. I'm just suffering for the Lord. And, you know, and, and they, uh, but now when you say, tell them about healing, it seems like they want to hang on to that. And, and when you're praying for people, sometimes people, well, so-and-so died. Uh, my grandmother died. They did this and did that. But they don't know what those people believe. Because it's out of the abundance of the heart, the Bible said the mouth speak. So the whole thing about everything in the kingdom of God, if you have to reach it by faith. Now, we have scriptures in here. Let's go over to... Uh, Let's go to James first. I'm going to come back. I'm going to be jumping around. Okay. But let's go over to the book of James. And James, I believe, is chapter 5. James chapter 5. And this is, should be happening not regular, not all the time. James 
James chapter 5. Yeah. This shouldn't be happening all the time because every time the doors open, mm -hmm. you got folk ready to run in and, you know, want somebody to lay their hands on that. But somewhere you ought to be, people ought to be maturing to the point that they can do take this to somebody else. Not every time the church door open, every healing line open up, they're in it. Mm -hmm. And been said, I've been saved. He was talked up. Well, I've been on working with the Lord for, I've been on the, what they call it, the road for the Lord for a long time. And I ain't tired yet. But yet and still, you have overcome anything. You're not overcoming it. And the whole thing about your witness. Because people, you know, even though you're saying stuff, but people don't pay you any attention because people are looking for somebody that's overcoming. You know, and uh, we go, to, oh, let's see, that I said James chapter 5, verse five 13 uh, what I said, 13, mm -hmm. 5. Chapter 5, chapter, uh, James 5, verses 13 to 16. Oh, yeah. It says, uh, did, did you want to read it? Sure. Yeah. Is, if any among you, is any among you afflicted, let him pray. Is any merry, let him sing psalms. If any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have, come, and if he have committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. Amen. So let's look at this once again. And it talks about, because I hear a lot of people talk more about the oil than anything. That didn't sit down. If you read this again, he says, anoint them with oil in the name of Jesus. Now, this is, this is, the, this is where the rubber, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Not the oil. Don't mention anything else about the oil, even though he's instructed them to, for elders, and you got to be careful about who your elders are. Elders is someone that's mature in the things of God and believe this whole Bible. Not want to take parts out of it and, and say, well, we don't have that anymore at all. When you run upon somebody like that, you might well uh, uh, go down the road somewhere else. And this is why I teach so much about believers getting a hold to the Word of God for themselves. Learn to pray and stand on the Word of God for yourself because this is what Jesus, who Jesus is looking for. You're a child of God. Once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're no more longer a servant, but you become, he become your father. And the fa and, and he's the type that wants you to come bolder to the throne, not crawling in or go, go, have to go down the road to find somebody else. About, it's about what do you believe? What do you believe? What do you have faith for? You had faith to get saved, mm -hmm. then you haven't seen God, you, you believe the word, you believe that, if you got saved, you have to believe something. You have to, <laughs> based up on the scripture, his, the Bible says to believe that God raised Jesus from the dead for your salvation. In other words, if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. Now, you got to believe that. Just saying words won't save you. But the Bible says if you believe it, you shall be saved. And it's the same principle we're receiving anything from God. And we have script after scripture telling us to come bolder to the throne. That we don't have to, and a lot of times we all fall short. But the whole bottom line is you, as long as you're falling forward, and if you miss it, you've got to say, well, I just missed it. i got to get back into the Word and begin to seek God faithful and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you, bring to members those things that God has provided for you because if you're trusting somebody else for yourself, you got to be, <laughs> if you trust in some way, it's like trusting somebody else with your money. You know, your money, your gold, jewelry. I left my jewelry down to my friend's house. <laughs> and then you go, next thing you know, you stand up in a courtroom trying to get, and they say, well, we can only give you so much. They stole thousands, but in some courtroom that we see, they can only give you so much, yeah. you know. But the whole thing about it is that you got to be able to believe God for yourself. He wants us all to be strong in the Lord, in faith, because that's the only thing that moved the hand of God. It's what he has said in his word. 
And we thank you, Father God, for your word because we have experienced it. And we know that when we fall short, we're somewhere we say, hey, we have to come back and seek God again. Because we know if, if we missed it, if something's not going right, it ain't, it's not on his part, it's on ours. Something we didn't do. If we're walking in unforgiveness, you cannot receive your healing. The Bible tells us whether that Mark 11, 23, Mark 11, 23, in other words, it talks about if that person not uh, walking in forgiveness, don't let him think he receive anything from the Lord. You know, and uh, I believe it's, um, I believe this Mark 11, 23. Yeah, but anyhow, it talks about Unforgiveness. So you're walking in unforgiveness. That's a, that's a, a that's, that's, a, 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 could it be <laughs> one of the little foxes that can hinder you from receiving your healing? Because the Bible talks about out of the mouth, that this little thing here messes us all up. Because what happened is sometimes we can receive and nullify what we see, start talking doubt and unbelief and talking to somebody else about what somebody else is doing, meddling in somebody else's business. And the only business that we, that each one of us have is I do what we do out of love mm -hmm. because we love people. We love to see people get saved. But as far as me telling somebody, my neighbor, and getting mad because of some other question, that ain't none of my business. That's God's business. I can't be out there meddling, well, they ought to be doing this and they ought to be doing that. I can't do that. That's not none of my business. We do this because we love to see people come into the body of Christ, except Jesus, because we know that they're going to be overcomers. And they're going to also identify with his death, burial, and res resurrection by being doers of the word. And we love to see people run into other people of like faith that excited about the things of God, not <laughs> Come and talking a whole lot of doubt. Well, well, you know, well, so and so did so and so. We're not interested in what someone. What, what the thing about it is, your business is your own house. That's right. I'm the high priest of this house, and nobody. And I can't go down the street telling somebody. Well, you know, look down there to see what they're not doing. But now, what I need to you do is unite with a body of believers that believe like I do. To believe, at least believe that God raised from the, at least believe that. Yes. Because if I'm involved with something and I don't have no confidence in it, what well, in the world I'm doing in there? You know, because I had to, we had to depart for some places because all it was doing was just keeping us scratching our head. <laughs> but I wonder what this, and the Holy Spirit, well, what are you doing here? You, you you know you leave them alone because the Bible talks about tares. We gonna have false prophets. We gonna have. But now I have to be very careful about wagging this. This is the biggest enemy to our faith. It's the biggest enemy. This little thing here. The Bible says, "Who can tame the tongue?" You know, only the Holy Spirit can tame the tongue. When you go to open up your big mouth to say something, again, the Holy Spirit will yank your trunk. You know, like. You can't say that. You know, you need to repent of that. And this is what keep you going on and on and in the freedom that Jesus Christ died that we can have life and have this life more abundantly. Because what happened is the Bible says, in, uh, it talks about death and life in the power of the tongue. And I remember this lady, and she was so gracious that I think you and I was talking to her, and she hadn't even... Uh, Remember her saying these type of things, how she loved her grandchildren. Oh, yeah, to death, huh? I just loved my, and she thought about that, and she thing was happening in her, in her family, but she was sincere about what she was saying. She loved them, but she didn't realize what she was doing until we brought her attention to, mm -hmm, wait a minute, saying. if death and life in the power of the tongue, I have to be careful about what I'm saying. I just love my husband to death. And I just love so and so to death. So what you're really doing, Bible said, death and life in the power of the tongue. And so the whole thing about it, whatever you planting, it's gonna come up. You know, if you plant something evil or, or speaking negative towards about somebody, and the Holy Spirit is the one that'll clean us all up. We all need that because sometimes we all get off. You know, none of us have arrived to the point. But the whole bottom line is, 
we acknowledge that this is the word of God. And when we see something in the scriptures, the Bible says, put off the old man and his deed. Well, guess what we need to do? Probably. Put off lying. Mm -hmm. Cheating. And, you know, what the other one is, is when <laughs> causes discord among the brothers and sisters and nobody in the family. We all got saved. We was all drinking together. Then when we got saved, we thought we were going to have a high heel time with our relatives. Everybody got saved, but it looked like everybody split up and went to <laughs> we call water. Uh, they don't know what they believe. And they was in this before we got into it. You know, before we got saved, well, you were saved before I was. And, uh, but we see this in families. You know how you think everybody in the family done got saved, we all gonna have a high here, good time. And all of a sudden now you sitting at home by yourself and the devil creeps in and tell you, you see, nobody love you. And this is where the pity party comes in where now you, you, all of a sudden you begin to listen to the devil rather than the Bible tell us when those type of things happen, stir up that gift that's in you. But how, how do I do that? By praying in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. He said, I would never leave you. He would always stick with you. You know, uh, you're talking about a friend. Indeed, it'll feel like you have a whole crowd with you if you trust in him. And all this trust comes by faith. Now we have scriptures in here that talks about it was a, uh, about healing. We're talking about healing. Let's go over to uh, uh, Romans, not Romans. Uh, uh, let's see. That I said Matthew twenty. The lady with the issue of blood. Oh, Matthew, Matthew nine. Matthew nine verse twenty. Matthew nine. We see this. Jesus loves us so much. Oh, did I read the one in, about the, the man went up on the roof? I didn't read that, did I? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't talk about that. that. Well, now we'll read that one next. Okay. Let's go over to, I just want to lay out some scripture here. Matthew 9. Mm -hmm. Verse 20. And this person, this this is some. I love this because I, we used to sing this song all the time, but I didn't know what it was singing about. A friend of mine and I, we, he started a little quartet. <laughs> and we started singing these songs. I didn't know it was in the Bible. I'm a friend of God. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, no. I'm, I don't sing that one no more because no. I'm not a friend of God any longer. Yes, son. I'm a son. Mm -hmm. and before. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, Matthew, not the last chapter of Matthew, verse 20. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came before him, behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Hold it right there. For she said within herself, that's faith. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing that we want to point out to everything that you get into the kingdom of God. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you enter into the God places you into his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Now you become a dual citizen. You part a citizen of heaven and since you're still living here on earth, you're a citizen here on earth. And when you invite, you have an opportunity to invite him into your business, into your home, because he's not coming unless he's invited. And this is the good news of what she said. Yes, she said. She said. It. Now. If I may but touch his it's, garment. Let's read that again in verse 20. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years became and, behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, if I may touch his garment, I shall be made whole. And Jesus, want to go ahead and read and that. Jesus, but, Jesus turned, but Jesus turned him about. And when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. <clears throat> Thy faith hath made thee whole. Thy faith the hath faith. made thee whole. The faith. Didn't it say some miracle? Mm -hmm. It said thy faith. In other words, faith. everything, and this is the thing that people seem to frown on so hard. You got other believers, other Christians, and I believe they're saved, here, but some things are missing because the Bible talks about it in the last day of knowledge will increase. So the more that you give opportunities, because some people, they dwell with liquor. Maybe some of their family was alcoholics. 
or uh, something like that, and and it, and it carried over when they grew up. They, all they remember was Uncle Joe was a drunk, and everything come by the, you know when it, when it come down to liquor and stuff, not realizing that that person was trying to fulfill that void with something else. That's an emptiness that when a man come when a child come into this world. He come, the Bible said there's a light that's lighted every man that come into the world. That they, for some reason, we all have to worship something. There's, you know, that void. And so what happened is when you don't know the word of God, you're not born into a place where teaching the word of God, even though you would trust God. So, well, something is missing when you call out to him and say something is missing. He will direct you to a place that you can hear the word of God. Because that's his endeavor. He said he died that, so that everybody can be, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So he, this is a thing that he has challenged every believer to find out for themselves. You know, in other words, you can't be walking around, well, and I got to trust so-and-so. No, when that little nudge come on, you got to lay aside your mother, father, and go and find out, wait a minute, I need some help. I can't do this. And the Bible says, he, in other words, he died that you can come boldly to the throne. Mm -hmm. And and this opportunity, he, there's a scripture in the Bible that says he has predestinated. And a lot of people don't understand what predestined means. It doesn't mean he chose you, he picked me, but he knows everything. Mm -hmm. He knew that you were going to come and accept what he died. Jesus says. He already knew that. So he will always, the Holy Spirit will always direct you to a place that you can hear the word of God. And this is the thing that a lot of people are missing. However, this lady must have heard something. Jesus was passing through, so she must have heard something, so she said within herself. What she said? Well, she said within herself, if I may touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Now we pointed out scriptures in James chapter 5 about healing. That's, that's that's one of them, but it never said the oil heal anybody. He said the prayer of faith heal them. In other words, receive your healing mm -hmm. by faith. And the Bible says, out of the mouth, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So the thing about it, you have to speak what God has said, take it off the pages and hear you say it in your words. This is, this is, this is how I got it. Hey, you have said in your word, if I do so and so, and so you would do this and do that. But I have to give him his word. I can't give him what the preachers down preaching 25 years ago. Somebody got, you know, well, they did it back. To, no, I got to come in here and, and study the word of God and take the word off the pages and begin to put it in my heart. And guess what? God will come with sign following. And then he said, when you're done all, to stand. Don't back up because we realize that we have an enemy to your faith. He always going to come just like he did with Jesus. Mm -hmm. He attempted Jesus to say, well, if you was the son of God. He knew that all the time, but he always wants you to start cast doubt. And he wanted, well, you, if you was healed, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be like that. But what we teach us is this. Mm -hmm. I believe. I believe that I'm healed. Once you ask God for something, you have to believe it. Wait a minute. Let's go over here. Uh, let's go to 13. Uh, what I say? Uh, I believe it's Matthew. Nine. No, John chapter 13. John 13. John 13. John 13. John 13. Verse. Uh, verse, no, wait a minute, I said 13, 14, 13. Okay. Oh, and let's, I'll tell you what, let's go back to thir uh, 14 and verse 12. 14, 12. Mm hmm Okay, that says, Verily I say unto you. Yeah, go ahead. Oh. Reach. Verily I say unto you, Verily, verily I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. 
that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Go ahead first. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Anything. And now we, what he have to, this have to be qualified. Absolutely. And it has to be something godly. Yes. It can't be something according just according to his word. According to his word. Yes. His will. You have to find, and this is his will. This is how you find out what his will is right here in the, in the book. You have to read it. And this book here <laughs> cover every basis based upon your life. You came from God. He, you came from you came from God. He's the manufacturer of you. I would say to you, uh, any person, you need to go back to the manufacturer and find out what he did for you. How, in other words, he made you. So you would go back to him. Anything that you have and anything that a, a young person, an old person having, if you're having, what is this, everybody claim to heaven now? Authorized. Authorized. <laughs> not only yes. uh, this new thing. Yes. This is a mill thing that's going on now. They suicide. Can't, it's yeah, suicide. suicide. And they can't build enough buildings of oh, the, the council. But anyway, those type of things are something men made up. Some kind of thing. That, it, it helps somebody, but it's for a moment. But for, for a time, until you go around the corner. They don't tell you about the thief comes, and even though they put a little band aid on you, on your finger, you got hurt, they put a band on. But if you're jumping in deep water, that band-aid eventually is going to come off. Well, now they try to make some that are, <laughs> that operate underwater, but it's just a matter of time that it's going to come off. Mm -hmm. And so the thing you have to be, you have to do is stick with the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Stick with your Word. And it's take patience. And the Bible talks about us, we have to run this race by patience. It's sometimes you can't, it's not like McDonald's, you're driving through, and I see people <laughs> get mad because they didn't get in fast enough. You know, driving through McDonald's, and they they want to punch the person out in the window because they didn't have it ready when they right. asked, you know, when, at that time they thought it ought to be ready. But the whole thing about it, we see these scriptures in there. It says, And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. That's what healing is bring glorifying God. When mm -hmm. we stand, what he's talking about when a child like our children, when they stand up, heal and doing different things, it goes, you know, it makes me want to stick my chest out because they're overcoming. Mm -hmm. And this is a father that <laughs> loved them more than I could ever love them. But he's given us all these things. And then he said, he says here in verse, he says, if you ask anything in my name, I, I will, do I will do it. Mm -hmm. But you don't ask God. I mean, you don't ask Jesus. You ask God in the name of Jesus, in his name. That faith, and when you say in the name of Jesus, that's like the combination law. That sells it. And Jesus is going to look over it. And then he said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And then 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now, the lady that we read about in Mark chapter, uh, uh, John, uh, Matthew chapter 9, verse 20, Mm -hmm. with the issue of blood. She had been sick for years. And she said, if I could touch him, yes. Jesus, when he saw her faith, she's a daughter. And what, back then, what I would like to say to uh, let you know, she had a covenant. She had a covenant that why she, that's why he said, uh, as a daughter of Abraham, mm -hmm. that she should be healed. She should receive her healing. Every person that Jesus came to minister to, they already knew about that they had a covenant with God, but the, the whole thing about it, most of them had to go through the high priest. In other words, to receive, that's why Jesus told some of them to go show yourself to the priest. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 but now, what we have, let's go over to the book of, uh, what did I say, uh, John chapter uh, 14. That's when I talked about love, he talked about a new covenant, this new covenant that he's given us, that we love one another. Here it is right here, 12, 15, 12. This is a new covenant. This is a new covenant. This is my commandment. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love in no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Now, 
Under this yeah. law, this is the law we have. Let's go over to the uh, book of Ephesians. And the book of Ephesians, I want to show you that we, at that particular time, that was for the Jew, and the Bible tells us in Exodus chapter 30, this was a covenant between me and the children of Israel. That covenant, when Jesus died on the cross, he came back to let us know that he have a, we have a new, we can be drafted in as Gentiles. Everybody else was was Gentiles, and he, this is what what we have now. And they talk about in the book of Hebrews uh, a greater promise that we have now, established mm -hmm. upon a better promise. In uh, two, two and verse eleven, and he says here, wherefore remember that in time past, remember remember that ye. In time past, were Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hand, that at that time you were without Christ, being alien from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenant. And that's what he's talking about here. Now we have the right to come <clears throat> boldly to the throne, that we can receive everything that Jesus Christ died on the cross for us to. To, to uh, in other words, he's, then that's why it says in Second Peter that He given us all things pertaining to life yes. and godliness, and I'm certain that healing is one of the main things because we have so many people with uh, uh, trusting doctors today. You know, for you know cancer. Uh, the other one is mental illness, uh, depression, depression, and you got the young people today. That, uh, they don't see no hope in anything. You know, our uh, leaders and things, they don't see any leaders. I mean, you think about it. Here's a young person just 10 years old, maybe 8, 9 years old. We've experienced some of that in our mm -hmm. family. Just got started, just got, I mean, just got to able to live. Mother and dad are feeding them and taking care of them, and all of a sudden they want to commit suicide. Why? Because some friend. Some girlfriend that they thought was gonna be their hope to die a friend, and they, they went on down the street with somebody else. And now that person's so hurt, so they want to kill themselves. Same thing with a boyfriend, you know, some boyfriend. He he want to kill himself because the other girls she strutted off with a, another boy, and because that's where your hope is at. But when you been brought up where you ought to put your hope in Christ because the world, I'm going to tell you right now, the world, they talk that stuff, but they don't, they spend all kind of money, but they don't care nothing about you because if they did, they tell you about Jesus Christ who died on the cross that you don't have to go through all that kind of heartaches and everything. They tell you about the love, the true love, the truth, the true love that someone died on the cross that, and bring you up and bring you in places they want to take it out of school. Mm -hmm. They don't want you to know about. Uh, I was at a place last night and somebody talking about this. All of a sudden, they had prayed. I didn't even know it. Because they, they said right. it was a place with a lot. And they said, we're going to have a, I think they said, we're going to have a silent prayer. Silent prayer. I said, well, how can you pray that? Because Jesus said, when you pray, say, say, say something. So I'm waiting on them. They're about to turn the lights out on me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got we got to pray. Well, I wanted to leave me in agreement. I don't even know what they. I don't. I don't, I wouldn't even know how to start a silent prayer. Because <laughs> God answered what the word says. He don't answer your thoughts. You know how a good thought. I had a good thought. No, in in the scripture here it says, with that tongue, with your mouth, whatever thing you desire when you pray, you say whatever thing you desire. When you pray, consistent with a godly life. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about. All these promises is for you and your family. And a lot of us have been walking around letting things happen to our family, not in, interceding on our, with our family. And, not, and the fact about it, we should at least have enough to be like Abraham. Abraham was not born again like we are. Mm -hmm. But he did have the heart to pray for those, intercede for those that was in Sodom and Gomorrah. In fact, about it, he goes so far to tell, talk to God, said, shouldn't God of all heaven and earth do right? And he told me, if you can find so many in the city, I'll spare. And this is what he's saying to us today. If you, because the doctors and things are using you for guinea pigs. Everywhere you go, you go into the uh, uh, 
the drug stores and I mean the pharmacists, everybody coming out with big bags of uh, 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 medication. medication, and all you have to do is open it up, take the bag out, and, and read to the letter. Well, first, the doctor gonna try to explain it to you. Being the pharmacy gonna try to tell you how to take it. Mm -hmm. You know, are you familiar with this this medication? Well, you have to take it like this. But then, when you say, "Well, wait a minute," I'm gonna go a little further, and then you pull out the paper that they all this paper they put into your bag, you. and you start <laughs> reading what it says. Uh, is some of it called blindness? The other one, your kidney might go out, and the other one, you might lose an eye. <laughs> Okay, I mean, and then they want you to call back and tell them, how did it make you feel? Because you were guinea pig. They, they want you. Well, <laughs> you know, you, uh, oh you go goodness. to the doctor and then still they ain't listen to you. And you wind up, they give you medication and you all wait out and they take off the wrong leg. We say, you know, I mean, I'm not talking about something that far. I'm talking about things I know that happened to some of our loved ones. Yes. The people that we knew went to the doctor, and they they looked like they was in the bill of health, but when they came back, then some of them started going out for uh, chemo. One doctor told them they had uh, uh, cancer, and the other one said you didn't, and the other one said, well, you need to go over to the, and they sent them over there, and the person come back, and now they're so confused, they don't know what to believe. But when you trust God, this is where the trust come in. We have hope. And I want you to know out there, this is your hope right here, the Word of God. When you get into the Word of God and begin to search the Scriptures, and that's why so many young people are walking around, they had a relationship with God at one time, but now they're not going to a place to be fed the Word of God. Their spirit is hungry. Mm -hmm. They're thirsty for something, but nobody wants to tell them. And nowadays, you, can, you used to could talk to a child on the corner, Nowadays, they, they get, you might get locked up for trying to tell a person that was going through something that you're trying to help them with something, tell them there's hope, but you run in, you know, you might be get locked up for telling them about this medication. They don't want to hear it. Have no side effect. The other one will give you, you come out blind. I remember taking some stuff they gave me, and man, I woke up through the night, I didn't know where I was at. I had to call, you called the doctor back and told him, wait a minute, I don't give my husband no more of that stuff. I had nightmares all night, fighting and kicking and going on and so forth. So the thing about it, our time is up. And right now, Unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> but right now, I mean, just think about, you You got the world out there telling you, we don't want you to say nothing about Jesus. You can't talk about Jesus in the school mm -hmm. until some tragedy really happened. A whole bunch of them get shot up. Now they want to pray. A silent prayer. Right. Well, who are they going to pray to? You already said you didn't want him. You didn't want him in the schools and everything. But this is your hope, and This is why so many young people committed suicide because their parents and things not telling them that they have some hope or taking them to a place because Jesus told them, uh, the disciples, feed my sheep and feed my lamb. And the Bible tells us God, man should not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. This is your spiritual food. So what is happening to the young people, they might go to a place and get in a worship service and they have a little sweet pill at that particular time, but then all of a sudden they get away from it and now they, they don't know what's going on because nobody got enough sense to tell them or they don't know themselves because surely if they knew they would be telling that there's hope in Jesus Christ, but this is how you have to do it. Most of them are trying to tell me about Jesus, but then that's why they go with it. But that person need to know because they have to grow in the things of God. Well, my time is up, and I'm gonna have to get back because I, we got people out there that's hurting, and they need to hear something that's gonna really minister to them. Well, Father God, we thank you and we praise you for your word, and right now, I'd like to give an altar call. If you're out there and you're not saved, you'd like to receive Jesus Christ, you heard something, and you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, let's pray this prayer along with me. Just repeat after me. So, dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I'm a sinner, and I cannot save myself. I've heard about, about Jesus, but I, right now I would like to accept him into my heart. Your word says, if I confess with my mouth, and I believe in my heart 
that you raised Jesus from the dead for my justification, that I would be saved. And right now, with my mouth, I confess Jesus Christ into my heart as my Lord and Savior. You said I would be saved. And I thank you right now for my salvation in Jesus' name. And now, being born again, that's what we call being born again. Now you're a candidate to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a gift. And all you have to do is say, as I lay hands on you by faith, by, so I receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Just open your mouth and other something, make some kind of noise. That's your faith. And all of a sudden, so I receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is important in your life as a believer, that you can pray in your heavenly language, that you can bind up and you can loose and you can pray for your brothers and sisters that you don't even know. It's an opportunity that you can reach the whole world sitting in your office interceding for those in the body of Christ because the body of Christ is not just those in your little circle. The body of Christ is all over the world. And some of them going through different th things over there. I mean, persecution, big time persecution. We're so confident in, we, in our little thing. We've got <clears throat> big buildings and everything, air conditioning blowing all over the place. The air conditioning so strong, it blows the doors and everything else open, you know. But we're so rich mm -hmm. in everything that we do. Big calls. All kind of, you, they don't wear clothes unless they got somebody's name on it, <laughs> name brand stuff and all that kind of stuff. But I just want you to know there's hope for you if you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior right now and get you a Bible and begin to study. Don't run to somebody, some other ignorant, that person out there trying to find out well, what you think about this because they don't know. Because I always say this, if somebody know this because it's good, why aren't they telling you? They'd rather tell you what you can't do, what you can't have, and God don't do this no more. You know, but if you begin to search the scripture, then you would be like those in the book of Acts. They said they went everywhere searching the scripture to find out if these things are so. So right now, I'm going to have to shut down. <laughs> and <laughs> thank you, Father God. Thank you, honey, for joining. Mm -hmm. Thank We've you had for a, joining us. Yeah, I had a good time in the Word today. Yes.